Tonight, on On The Level, we'll be investigating a rash of x-axis gantry leveling issues affecting the local 3D printing community. For far too long, these issues have been plaguing local residents, and this investigative reporter is determined to put an end to it. We're going to be going live on the scene to investigate what can be done. Just like with the rest of a 3D printer's frame, the x-axis gantry needs to be square or parallel to a printer's base to ensure proper and high quality printing. Unfortunately, the gantry can arrive out of square from the factory, be knocked out of alignment from rough handling, or even affected by modding activities, like installing linear rails. As a result, the printer's nozzle will not maintain a constant distance to the bed, causing prints to fail and the nozzle to hit the built surface. While gantry leveling problems can be measured with a ruler or even a simple box, you can often easily see these issues directly in a printer's mesh. To demonstrate, I intentionally raised the left side of the x-axis gantry of this printer here and created a mesh. Looking at the mesh, we can clearly see the left side of the gantry is noticeably higher than the right by almost 2.5 millimeters. A telltale sign of gantry leveling issues is the roughly linear change across the x-axis without similar magnitude changes along the y. For the rest of this video, we're going to walk through the steps to re-level the gantry. While this is a relatively easy task, we'll need a few supplies. First, a hex wrench to loosen the z-axis timing belt nuts. Neptune 3 and 4 series printers use a 2mm hex wrench but your printer might require a different size. Next, a machinist or carpenter square, or anything similar with a flat bottom, a flat top, and ideally, it can stand on its own. The exact size doesn't really matter, except you want the top of the square to be somewhere in the middle of your printer's Z range. The third and last item is a 3D printed spacer. While this is an optional item, I find it helps ensure the Z-axis timing belt is level after reassembly. A link to the model is in the video's description. Unlike most of our videos, the first step is to turn on your printer and wait for it to start up. Once it is ready, place the machinist square on the base of the printer and raise the x-axis gantry until the bottom of the extrusion is almost at the top of the machinist square. and then move the machinist square to the side so it doesn't fall or get damaged. With the gantry in position, we can spin the printer around and loosen the nuts holding the Z-axis timing belt. If the Z-axis belt set screws are not accessible, raise or lower the X-axis gantry slightly until the screws can be reached. While only one of the nuts needs to be loosened, I found it a little easier to loosen both since the 3D printed spacer can be used to position both nuts during reassembly. Whether you decide to loosen one or both nuts, you want the nuts loose enough so the lead screw is able to easily rotate without applying any force to the timing belt. With the nuts loose, we can spin the printer back around, but before we start the leveling process, we need to turn the Z axis motors off. Depending on your printer, there are multiple ways to achieve this. For Neptune 3 and 4 series printers, you could use the LCD controller. For this option, click on the motor off button on the prepare screen. Another option, applicable to any Marlin or Clipper based printer, is to send a G-code command to turn off the motors. In this video, we'll be using Inspector G-code, but you could use Pronterface for Marlin printers and Fluid or Mainsail for clipper printers. If you haven't used Inspector G-Code before, it's an application in the Bed Leveler 5000 software suite that lets you send G-Code commands to your printer and view the raw responses. The download link for Inspector G-Code is in the video's description. To disable the motors on a Marlin printer, we first connect to the printer and then send the G-Code command M18Z.
for a clipper printer, we again first connect to the printer and then use the following command. In this example, the printer's z-axis stepper motor is named stepper underscore z. Check your printer.config file and if your z-axis stepper motor is named something different, you'll need to update the command. That finishes the preparation and we can begin the core leveling process. To start, place the machinist square back on the printer's base, using the screws on the edge of the base to ensure the square is straight. Next, very slowly, turn the lead screw clockwise until the machinist square can just barely pass underneath. Ideally, there would be a tiny amount of friction indicating the bottom of the gantry is at the very top of the square. If you raise the gantry too high, don't try to lower it into position. Instead, lower the gantry enough so you have to raise it back up to get to the correct height. Now, move the square to the opposite side and repeat the process. Depending on your printer and how loose you made the timing belt nuts, you might need to hold the other lead screw to prevent it from moving while you adjust the current lead screw. With that done, go back to the first lead screw and verify it hasn't moved. You might need to repeat this process a couple of times as the timing belt is still applying force to both lead screws. Once both sides of the gantry are level, it's time to re-enable the Z-axis motors. This step will help to ensure the lead screws do not move as the timing belt nuts are tightened. Unfortunately, the Neptune 3 and 4 LCD controllers do not have an enable motors button, so we will need to send a G-code command. In Inspector G-code, use M17Z for Marlin printers. And the following command for clipper printers. If you can't send G-code commands to your printer, or re-enable the Z-axis steppers, you can just hold onto the lead screw to prevent it from moving. With the motors enabled, use the 3D printed spacer to position the timing belt nuts and the hex wrench to tighten the set screws. Try to hold the lead screw still while tightening the set screws. The motor should prevent any movement, but we don't want to risk the gantry coming out of level. After tightening the nuts, Use the machinist square one last time to verify the gantry is still level. That was the final step in leveling the x-axis gantry. Now we can get to the good stuff, seeing your hard work pay off with a much better bed mesh. I've quickly re-manually leveled the printer and performed auto bed leveling, and here are the results. Unlike the earlier mesh, the sloping effect along the x-axis is completely gone and the mesh looks far better overall. The leveling process is now complete. However, before printing anything, create a new automatic bed leveling mesh and possibly do a full manual level as well. If your gantry was out of level when we started, your mesh should look a lot better than before. Before you go, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video so you can be the first to learn about our future videos, printer modifications, and enhancements to Bed Leveler 5000. Thanks for watching.